Hello, I'm Roger Smith in Chillicothe, Ohio. What you just saw is my little baby Tesla coil. A uh, coil like this normally runs off of a, something like a neon sign transformer. But today I'm running this on DC, similar to the way I did with my big Tesla coil. It has a very high interrupt rate that way. Makes a kind of a squealing noise. And it creates kind of a floating flame-like spark. Uh, lots of little sparks that kind of float together like a flame. Here's the schematic. It's very similar to the schematic of my larger Tesla coil. A few differences here. In the voltage doubler circuit, since we're using way less power, we cut back to a 0.1 microfarad capacitor instead of the 1 microfarad capacitor. After our charging choke, we got a 25,000 ohm resistor in there now, which we didn't have before. And of course in our primary circuit, we're not using a rotary spark gap, just have a multiple static gap. This coil, our primary capacitor is 0 0.008 microfarads. Uh, about eight or nine turns on the primary. Secondary winding is 800 turns of 0 0.01 inch diameter wire. Winding lengths about eight inches on about a two inch coil form. Here's a closer look at this Tesla coil. I got the primary there tapped on the ninth turn. There's my capacitor bank. It's altogether 0 0.008 microfarads. And there's my copper cylinder gap. And multiple gaps there. Spaced pretty close. And there's my filter choke, and there's the 25,000 ohms of resistance. Uh, feeding all that is, let me go to the charging choke here. Same charging choke as before, only I got the spacer out of the core. So I'm running a higher inductance. Uh, it's over 20 Henry's. I can't tell what it is because my meter doesn't go up high enough. And then of course I got my voltage doubler circuit here. And there's there's the 0.1 microfarad capacitor. I've done a lot of experimenting with different resistors and different values of inductance to get these really cool sparks. What I found is the resistance or the inductance isn't all that critical, but what is important is that you use both resistance and inductance in the circuit. Uh, you can't leave either one out. Um, the first time I came up with a coil to operate like this, I was using a DC type coil setup, and I used the secondary of a neon sign transformer uh, as a charging choke, and it, it worked out about the same way this coil works here. Uh, the neon sign transformer, as it so happens, has a high resistance to the winding they're about 15,000 ohms, as well as having a lot of inductance. So I went from that to try running a small coil like this off of a charging choke like I got here, and it wouldn't work. Well, once I put that resistance in that I had in the neon sign transformer, it worked just fine. And here I'm using these wire-wound resistors that are 
all together I got 25,000 ohms here. I could double that or probably cut it in half and it wouldn't make too much difference. Uh, but I'd say you need at least 15,000 anyway. We're going to do a little comparison here. I'm going to run this little Tesla coil off of a neon sign transformer and then I'll run it again on the DC and you'll be able to compare the discharge and the sound it makes. Here's the, the neon sign transformer I'm using. It's a 12 kilovolt 30 milliamp type. Back to the DC arrangement here. per second the discharge looks much brighter. On video it kind of looks like a discharge from a tube coil but if you look at it in real life you can see the individual streamers that kind of form pa intricate patterns. Uh, it really has to be seen to be appreciated. With so many breaks per second my spark gap heats up quite a bit and one problem I have if I run the coil too long the spark gap gets so hot that it doesn't quench very well so I think I'm going to have to rig up some kind of a cooling fan to keep it cool. A few notes on safety. Uh, this arrangement here is inherently much more dangerous than a coil driven by a neon sign transformer. Uh, the microwave oven transformers are inherently much more lethal and on top of that uh, I'm using capacitors in the, my voltage doubler circuit so one thing you got to worry about there is when you turn the power off to the coil if those capacitors stay charged uh, it could be very dangerous it, if you go to handle something and and they're still charged you get a bad you, know, you get a lethal shock from that. I have bleeder resistors to keep the charge blood down after the coils turned off and I check them with a screwdriver to make sure they're discharged before I handle anything. That's about it for today. Uh, I'll be back later with something else.